Welcome everyone, my name is Kevin. Today I'll be doing my first ever tablet comparison video. This makes sense for me to do the Galaxy Tab S7 versus the Samsung Galaxy Tab A7 because I've been using both for quite a while now and I know the pros and cons of each tablet and also what reasons there are to pay more for the Tab S7 or just save your money and go with the Galaxy Tab A7. Although these are in completely different pricing brackets, they do share a lot of equivalent features such as the quad speaker setup and the same version of Android. Both are also sporting Qualcomm Snapdragon chips and expandable memory through a micro SD card slot. Now, I'll go over all the features these two have to offer, we'll do a speed test, even a camera comparison, talk about the package contents, and uh, of course the daily performance of each tablet. Let's get to it. Samsung has done really well with the build quality and material choice of both Galaxy Tab devices. On the more premium Tab S7, we have a fully aluminum build, matted on the back, and a brushed finish around the corners, which house a lot of magnets for the S Pen. Well, we don't have any magnets on the Tab A7, uh, neither is there any brushed aluminum, but what we do have is matte aluminum, and just a small section on the top of the device that is made of plastic. This is the same side that has the volume buttons and power toggle, so on this device the buttons are plastic, though they're just as tactile as the more premium metal ones found on its counterpart. Both devices have quad speakers and a USB-C port which can be used to connect peripherals. Out of the box, the setup of these devices were pleasant and very straightforward and I immediately put in my biometrics for unlocking. On Tab S7, we have the option to do the face unlocks. We also have a fingerprint scanner on the power button. Now, I don't like the placement of this very much, but it is a very fast and accurate scanner. I ended up using the face unlock much more often than the fingerprint scanner. And uh, I should note that also on the Tab A7, we also have that face unlock, but there is no fingerprint scanner. Onto displays, we're comparing the two TFT panels here, the S7 being 11 inches, and the Tab A7 is 10.4, so they're very comparable in size. Can't say the same about the resolution and the refresh rate though. The S7 takes the win here in every regard, and the refresh rate is definitely one of its hallmarks. The panel is 2560 by 1600 pixels, which gives it a PPI of 274. At this resolution with 120 hertz, not only is it comparable to the iPad Pro and iPad Air, it's beating it. I'm talking of course in regards to the pixel density. Now that happens to not quite be the strong suit of the Tab A7 with only a 224 PPI. That's a resolution of 2000 by 1200. The 50 point PPI difference between these two is actually quite noticeable. Now thankfully, brightness and colors are very good on both panels and even with the cheaper device here on the Tab A7, the bezels are looking quite nice. I should say, given the price, the resolution of the Tab A7 is still not a disappointment to me. In the boxes we find wall adapters for both, USB-C to A cables, and instruction paperwork. The Tab S7 comes with a nice S Pen, we also have a tray ejecting tool, which curiously did not come with my Tab A7. I will always take the opportunity to complain about accessories, so here I go. Why on earth did Samsung decide a regular fast charger for this device was enough? They ship even the Galaxy A71 smartphone that has a much smaller battery with a more advanced super fast charger. Even worse, the Tab A7 has a standard travel adapter at 1.55 amps. This makes charging up both dreadfully slow, but especially slow on the cheaper device. On a positive note, both devices are confirmed to get the Android 11 update with One UI 3. When those updates do come around, I'm confident the chipsets and the device's RAM will hold to equally impressive performance. The more expensive tablet has 6GB of RAM versus 3 gigs here, and uh, on Tab S7 that will allow you to pull off multitasking to your heart's content. While I'm listing off specs, I should say that the Qualcomm Snapdragon chip inside of here is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 Plus. That's an octa-core chip, and it will allow you to play any game there is on the Google Play Store right now at top settings with no lag and no hindrance. I haven't found any flaws with this chip at all, and to top it off, it's starting with a fast UFS 3.0 base storage of 128GB. The storage speed here is much faster than the A7 storage. That device starts with only a base of 32GB internally. When you look at the price tags, you'll start to see just why there's such a drastic difference, but I'm doing this comparison to answer the question, is this device, the Tab A7, enough for you? 
I happen to strongly believe that 32 gigabytes is not enough for anyone, so factor in the price of a micro SD card into your purchase. Once you have got that storage situated, this is another very capable tablet, and it's got a Qualcomm Snapdragon 662 and the Adreno 610 for graphics. Many will be pleased to hear that it's capable of running graphics intensive games like Call of Duty Mobile at very high settings with the very high frame rate option. In some titles there are minor graphics stuttering, this is the less optimized games, and if you're buying the tablet for the intent of gaming and media consumption, the performance here is actually adequate in my opinion, it's good for that. This is made for tasks like taking care of your emails, watching movies, taking video calls, some light gaming but it is not a laptop replacement. For that, I'd say you're going to want that Samsung DeX feature, which is a desktop-like operation and further controls that paired with the S Pen makes the Tab S7 even more utilitarian than a laptop. Unfortunately, the DeX feature is only on the Tab S series and their higher end Samsung Galaxy S series phones and the Note phones. So let's talk about batteries now. On Tab S7, we have an 8000 mAh cell, and in the more affordable device is an even smaller 7040 mAh battery. The screen on times work out to around 20 minutes of extra battery life on the Tab S7, though if you're not using the tablets really extensively and for long hours, I would say you can get all day battery life on either one. I have talked about the performance of either tablet extensively in my review videos of each, now I'll leave you with a clickable card to watch those videos, the Tab A7 review and the Tab S7 review towards the end of this one, but what you're probably here for is the speed test between these two. So we'll start that, and uh, after that we'll follow it up with even more comparisons. The winner of that boot up test is unsurprisingly the Galaxy Tab S7. Of course I included my usual speed tests, opening apps, web browsing, I tried opening a few games as well, and to no surprise, in almost every instance the more expensive device takes the win, but not by as much of a difference as some would think. Is this a big practical difference? I guess that depends on your patience level, because for my use, the Snapdragon 662 is just fine. If anything, I'm more annoyed that Samsung has limited the multitasking capability of the Tab A7. That was actually a nice practical addition that I found myself truly enjoying on the more expensive and premium device, and it won't come to the Tab A7 even with software updates. These are the Geekbench 5 scores, take them for what they're worth to you. Tech enthusiasts already know that the Snapdragon 865 Plus is an incredibly fast chip in all regards, the best really in any current Android tablet. It is time for the camera comparison. Here on the Tab S7 we have two rear lenses, one is the 13 megapixel regular focal length lens and the other one is the 5 megapixel ultra wide lens. On the A7 we have a single 8 megapixel lens and there's no contest between these two tablets when it comes to the cameras. The Tab S7 takes superior images in every regard again, take this into account if you're picking up a device to suit your mobile photography needs as well. Even saying mobile photography on a tablet sounds weird, but if you pick up the LTE model of either one, that would actually make sense, I suppose. As always with my camera comparisons, I'll let you be the judge of which tablet has the better front camera for video calling and for the selfies. I think there is a clear winner for people who are artists, professionals, really anyone who's going to use their tablet for work. Go with the Tab S7. Now, if you're just using it for light gaming, you know, taking some video calls and watching movies, save your money and go with the Tab A7, because the Tab A7 is still very capable of that. That's all for today, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.